What's up, YLC family? It's your girl, Maya Purdue. I'm here at GPWA, and I am so glad you have joined us. Hey, be sure to tag at least three people. I know you have three people you can tag. Tag them, share the gospel, it's free. Get this gospel out today. Man, we're glad you have joined us. Be sure to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go like our Facebook page. Go follow us on Instagram. All the information is everywhere. Follow us. Get in contact with us. We want to see you and we want to connect with you. Thanks for joining us. You're ready for the service. Family, welcome to another week of worship and word with us. Listen, I'm excited about God's word today. I'm excited every week about it. This week, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Why do we have him in our life? What's the function and the purpose of the Holy Spirit? One of the reasons the Holy Spirit is significant is because he causes us to be a witness. Yeah, today I want to talk about the Holy Ghost, but not just from a praise break perspective. I want to talk about being a witness. I want I want to speak on behalf of the Holy Spirit today with this question that the Holy Spirit has for you. Can I get a witness? Oh, this is going to be good. I can't wait to get into it. Meet me inside. We're going to have some church. God bless you family, Pastor Jay here. So delighted that you have come again to worship with us uh, for another week of lifting up the name of our God. Listen, as you well know, this is the part of our service that we take the time to be intentional about our giving. It's an opportunity for us to give. That's right, an opportunity for us to bless the kingdom of God through the local assembly. Many of you partner with us and you have helped us uh, down through the years and you continue to do that each and every week. I'm asking if you would consider again, a seed offering or a donation, a partnership with this church. We're doing great and mighty things, great exploits for God's kingdom for such a time as this. You know, the Bible is clear when he says, I give seed to the sower. Yeah, people who give, he said, I'll supply their needs for them. Now don't get it twisted. We're not here to manipulate you. I'm not trying to tell you that if you give $50, that in 50 days you'll be debt free, unless that's what God said. What I'm simply saying to you is wherever your heart is, then that's where your treasure is. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you, I'm asking you if you would be a blessing to the ministry as well through your substance as we continue to move God's agenda forward in the earth realm through this local assembly. I'm excited about what God has for us and what he's gonna to continue to do through our partnership together. One shall chase a thousand, but two ten thousand. And with our partnership, we will do great and mighty exploits for the kingdom of God for such a time as this. God bless you, thank you in advance, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise all over the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Welcome to another worship experience. This is the day the Lord has made. What are we going to do? We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that when you rejoice, you make a demand to tell your flesh how to operate? When you rejoice, you tell your spirit what it will do. We will rejoice, not because we always feel like it, but we will like it. I need everybody right now in your homes, in your living room, in your cars, those in the sanctuary. I need you to put a wheel on your flesh, put a wheel on your spirit and say, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Come on. Ten more seconds, y'all. Let's give them some praise. I'm going to rejoice. 
It doesn't matter what the day brings. I will rejoice. It doesn't matter what news I have. I'm going to rejoice and I will be glad in it. I'm glad because he made the day. I'm glad because he designed the day. I'm glad because he knows what's going to happen during the course of the day. So that I will rejoice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be glad in it. God is good. Thank you for joining us again for another week of worship, another week of word that God has for us. And I believe God's going to bless us today uh, according to his divine pleasure and will. I want you to share this if you haven't already. Hit that share button. Help Pastor Jay, what, get the gospel out? Listen, they know it. Those that's in the sanctuary, they know it. And if you've been following us for at least two weeks, you know it as well. I want you to help me get the gospel out. Help me get the good news out. We share a whole lot of things, don't we? We share if there's a sale. Uh, we share if there's a funny meme or something, right? We share uh, sometimes, unfortunately, uh, 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 when somebody passes away. We share all of these things. Help me today share some good news. Somebody could use some good news in their life. And so by you sharing this, that is you being a witness of the gospel and a witness for the gospel of Jesus the Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you today. We honor you today. We glorify you because you have kept us all week. You've covered us. No matter what the enemy brought toward us, you covered us and you kept us from all harm and danger. And nothing that came against us was oblivious to you, neither did it overtake us. And for that, we give you praise. I pray now, God, that souls be reached today. This is our purpose of doing this, that souls will come to you, that they may ask, what must I do to be saved? I pray, God, that you be edified, that your name be edified. I'm praying, God, that your people be encouraged. And we decree it to be so now. In Jesus' mighty name, we come against every distraction that the enemy would try to bring right now. Help us, God, to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. And it is so in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Acts chapter number one. Acts chapter number one, verse number eight. Acts chapter number one, verse number eight. The Bible says, but you will receive Everybody holler and say power. I want everybody real quick. You got 10 seconds. I need you to put it in the comments. Power, 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 power. This is not for any weak folk today. This ain't for no weak folk. This ain't for scared folk. You shall receive power. Why are you walking around pitiful? You got power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I want to speak uh, this morning, if the Holy Spirit was here, well, he is here. Uh, <laughs> I want to speak, though, uh, on behalf of the Holy Spirit. And I want the, the, the topic, the subject, to come in the form of a question from the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the question uh, that the Holy Spirit is asking us today is, y'all ready? Can I get a witness? 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 Yes, you can. Can I get a witness? I got all millennials in here. They don't know nothing about that right there. Can I get a witness? But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit is asking, can I get a witness? I want us to understand uh, just uh, the purpose of uh, this book, the book of Acts. I want us to understand the purpose of the book of Acts and, and recognize that the book of Acts, of course, it is the fifth book of the New Testament. Uh, uh, the fifth book of the New Testament. Uh, and Acts is uh, uh, a lot of times uh, considered to be themed as the Acts of the Apostles, right? They call it Acts because of the actions of the apostles, the things that the apostles were doing during those times uh, of, the, of the Holy Spirit or the move of the Holy Spirit. So, so they say the Acts of the apostles because the apostles would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. The Acts of the apostles because uh, uh, the, the, the dead would rise again. Uh, but I believe a more uh, uh, clear theme, uh, a more appropriate theme, 
uh, of the book of Acts would be to declare it to be the acts, not of the apostles, but the acts of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the acts of the Holy Ghost. It is, it is uh, Luke, the physician, Dr. Luke, Dr. Luke, who is the author or the writer of the book of Acts. I'm going to give you this for free. The rest is going to cost you uh, for individuals who feel like they don't need doctors. Isn't it interesting that Luke is a physician, right? Uh, but Jesus is a healer. Isn't it interesting that the healer found it necessary or important to bring on a physician to be on his staff uh, because everything in the kingdom, everything in the earth can be used for the sake of the kingdom. So if Jesus uh, needed a doctor or used a doctor, uh, why are you and I fighting against ours? Come on, somebody. And so it is Luke, the beloved physician, who's the writer of the book of Acts. Of course, it's the same Luke uh, who also penned the gospel according to uh, St. Luke. Luke is one of uh, the three synoptic gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, and then, of course, you have Luke. Uh, uh, Luke said, I'm going to write uh, uh, from a physician's perspective as it relates to the acts of the Holy Spirit. Now, notice, uh, if you will, ladies and gentlemen, just this continuation of Christianity uh, as it relates from uh, the gospel according to St. Luke, right? and then moves forward to uh, the book of Acts. Look at the continuation of the account of Christianity. Look at the continuation of the account of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want you to understand that in the Gospel of St. Luke, the Gospel according to Luke, I want you to understand that Luke, in that Gospel, he was writing uh, about what Jesus was doing and teaching, check it, while Jesus was here, physically. While Jesus was here as a man, Luke was writing and recording what he did while he was here physically. Uh, uh, now, in the book of Acts, as Luke, again, the physician, writes, he is continuing to write about uh, what Jesus did, but only now he's writing about him through the Holy Spirit. Y'all with me? The book of Acts, Luke relates again about to what Jesus did and what Jesus was teaching, but he's doing it through the Holy Spirit or, or the Holy Ghost. All right? In the Gospel of Luke, he's writing what Jesus did physically. Uh, in the book of Acts, he's dealing with uh, what happened spiritually through the Holy Spirit. I want us to understand just for a few more minutes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that, that when you deal with the book of Acts, uh, you can avoid it if you would like, but not really, but you could try to get around it in other books of the Bible. But when you deal with the book of Acts, you have to come face to face with the Holy Spirit. You have to come face to face with the Holy Ghost because uh, the Holy Spirit made his debut, if you will, uh, in the book of Acts. I want us to understand uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, even the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, it's, it's a word that we call uh, pneumatology. Uh, pneumatology. Of course, we remember the word ology. Ology is the study of, right? Uh, the study of. The word pneuma uh, comes, uh, uh, means spirit. Uh, the word pneuma is defined as breath. The word pneuma is defined as the wind of God. Uh, you know, breath, pneuma. When a person has pneumonia, it's dealing with their, come on, y'all, breathing, correct, right? The way they breathe. And so pneumatology then is the study of the Holy Spirit or the study of the Holy Ghost. It is the study of the doctrine of the breath, God help me here, of God. It is God breathing. It is the wind of of God. It is the breath of God. It is the spirit of God. Uh, uh, because we recognize uh, God's spirit as the breath of God, we don't want to make then the mistake of minimizing the authority of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to minimize the Holy Spirit uh, by, by, by calling him something. Come on, church. We don't want to minimize the Holy Spirit uh, by calling him it. Uh, you know, something told me to do that. Something told me to call you. No, no, no. We don't want to minimize the Holy Spirit by reducing him to something or 
it. I got it. I got it. Well, I know we mean no disrespect, but we don't want to reduce him to it. A lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, we will uh, confuse personality, check this, with visibility. A lot of times we confuse the two, personality with visibility. Uh, personality, ladies and gentlemen, it is not an attribute, God help me, of the body. Mm, this is going to be good right here. Personality is not an attribute of the body. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, you don't act the way that you act because of the way that you look. Mm. <laughs> uh, maybe that would stop some profile, and y'all don't want to talk to me during Black History Month. Maybe that would stop some profiling if people stop uh, looking at someone to determine how they act. Personality is not an attribute of the body. I'm not acting the way that I act because of the way that I look. Personality, ladies and gentlemen, is an attribute of a spirit. Y'all ready to go? Y'all ready? I said personality is the attribute of a spirit. The physical man does not determine my personality. Uh, I don't act the way I act because of how, how dark I am or how light I am. I don't act the way that I act because of how tall I am or how short I am. I act the way that I act because of the spirit that I am allowing to lead and and guide and drive me in my life. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, because the physical man does not determine the personality, uh, but the spirit does, then I think as believers uh, in God, in Christ, I feel uh, that perhaps we should put more time and emphasis, God help me, on getting the spirit man together than we do with getting the outside together. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me in this library church. See, 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 I don't have to carry around this Bible all day, right, uh, just to prove to people that I'm saved. I don't have to take this Bible and carry it around everywhere I go, and I'm going to work, and I got my word in my hand, and I'm driving in my car, and I got my word open in the seat next to me, and I'm walking in the grocery store, and I got my word there. I don't have to carry this Bible around just to try to prove to other individuals uh, that I have the Holy Spirit. God help me. God help me. God help me. Uh, uh, I don't have to do things on the outside in the physical to try to prove as to who's on the inside. My spirit will show you if I'm sanctified. God help Pastor J right through here. I said my spirit is going to declare if I'm sanctified. Now don't get it twisted because I'm not talking about sanctified as it relates to uh, what we have on the outward appearance. Uh, I'm talking about sanctified as it relates to the meaning of the word, which is to be separated. Uh, and, and, and my spirit is going to testify as to declare if I've been separated or not for the use of of the master. You see, when I'm sanctified, even when I don't have a Bible in my hand, uh, my separation, my sanctification that, that comes from my spirit will always testify to the fruit of the spirit. God help me right through here. So when you have the Holy Spirit, then there should always be a testimony of love that comes from you. I, who gave the misconception uh, uh, that the meaner you are and the more disgruntled you are, that the holier you are. Where is the love? Why are you always mean mugging folk? Uh, that ain't holiness. That's me. you mean. Uh, you mean. That ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. That's who you are. That's mean. But when I have the Holy Spirit, then the testimony that comes from me should be love. It should be the fruit of the Spirit, joy and peace. Uh, you ought to see long suffering coming out of me, being manifest the gentleness. Uh, how you going to be full of the Holy Spirit? Oh, God, but you rough. God, y'all don't want to talk. Uh, you handle people uh, roughly. You, you, Your conversations are hard and they are harsh. When the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, it doesn't mean you a punk. It means you understand how to operate in gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness. What is that? Uh, my meekness is my strength. Yeah. <laughs> 
under control. Uh, I, I, I can curse you out. Uh, I can put you in your place. Uh, I can use these hands, uh, but I have meekness, which is strength, God help me, under control. I, I have temperance. These are the acts of the Holy Spirit uh, that are made manifest from you. When you have the Holy Ghost working on the inside, when you have the, uh, the Holy Spirit operating uh, on the inside, ladies and gentlemen, we should see the fruit of the spirit. God, y'all don't want to talk to me. I said we should see the fruit of the spirit uh, when you have the Holy Spirit working and living on the inside of you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters, when you and I deal with the book of Acts, uh, we are also dealing with the book of action. If, 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 if Acts uh, was a movie, uh, we would call the book of Acts an action movie. Y'all get what I'm saying? Because Acts is a book of movement. It's a book of action. Uh, how in the world can you get settled in the book of Acts when the book of Acts is all about a movement? And it is my belief, ladies and gentlemen, that every church needs to have an Acts experience. Woo! They ain't gonna lie like me on this part right here, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't care what the name of your church is on the outside. On the inside, every church needs to have an acts experience. Uh, why is that, Pastor Jay? It, it is because we're living in a time and in a dispensation, even in a generation uh, to where people are saying we need to see, God help me, who it is is you say that you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe that's why you have people leaving the church by the hundreds um, because who we've been talking about and who we've been ma manifesting uh, are antithetical to each other. So so the world today is saying, uh, I hear you talking about this great big old God, but where is he operating in your, I need to see the acts of the Holy Spirit operating through you. You see? Uh, you got all these people dying in the world. Uh, all these people that got sickness and disease. Uh, uh, I, I know that you've been healing folk in your prayer line. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I got to go there. Since we out there, Lady P, let's go there. Uh, I know you be healing people in your prayer line. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you be blowing on folk uh, and folk fall out uh, and they are healed. Uh, I know you laying hands on folk uh, and they healed uh, by your word. Uh, but with all of this sickness and disease, I want to know when are you going to take that axe experience uh, into the hospital room? Come on here uh, and heal somebody that has a real sickness where God can get the glory uh, because of the manifestation of healing that has taken place. Maybe, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, maybe you all, uh, uh, we have gotten used to celebrating. Uh, deliverance in a controlled environment. Maybe we have uh, totally uh, diluted uh, and demoted uh, a very move of God uh, into just falling out on the floor and covering you with a white sheet. Uh, maybe God is saying there's more to me, uh, God help me, than you just speaking in tongues. Uh, maybe I want to show myself strong outside of of your controlled environment within the four walls of your church. Maybe God says, I want to show the acts of healing among them that are really and truly sick. Uh, we got all of this hatred in the street. Uh, we got all of this hatred with those who are racist. We have hatred toward uh, certain ethnicities and certain gender groups. We have all of this hatred toward people of particular economic statuses. Uh, we have all of this division and sometimes uh, Jada and Maya sometimes it looks like the church is involved with the messiness just as much as the world is come on 
church uh, with all of this hatred and with all of this division and with all of this confusion I want to know ladies and gentlemen can I get a witness so that we see a manifestation of the love of God in a world that's full of hate uh, somebody put in the comments and says he needs a witness come on you all say he needs a witness he needs a witness uh, he needs a witness he don't need you to just be a witness doing your praise break he don't just need you to be a witness while you putting them up and putting them down I don't have a problem with any of that but none of that helps those on the outside who could use the love of God in their life I see y'all putting it in there he needs a witness uh, look at what the apostle Paul says in first Corinthians chapter number two verse number four y'all go there first Corinthians two and four the Bible says and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing everybody holler and say enticing look at what he said he said it was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power God help me look at verse 5 he says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God I could run off of that I'm getting excited off of that because ladies and gentlemen I believe one of the tricks of the enemy uh, during this time that we're living in is to get individuals to put more trust and put more faith in men and women more than they do into the God of their salvation I believe the trick of the enemy is to get you and I to put our faith hope dreams and trust into to men and women as opposed to putting our hope and faith into the God of that man God help me and the God of that woman notice what the apostle Paul says he says here follow me as I follow Christ he said follow me as I follow Christ uh, uh, follow me uh, as I follow Christ uh, uh, come here Keyshawn come on let me let me let me get your help uh, follow me as I follow Christ uh, so, so Paul here is not saying to put your trust in me, right? Y'all with me out there? You ready for this, Keyshawn? So, so, so Paul is not saying, I want you to put your faith in me. I want you to trust me. Uh, I want you to have a, a hope in me. Uh, let me let me help y'all out with something right quick. Let me show y'all the type of pastor that I am. Listen, uh, I do not have all the answers. God help me in here. Uh, uh, people be coming to me with stuff, and I be saying to them, uh, have you prayed about it? What did God tell you? Uh, because, because I know uh, the same God that you're depending on is the same God that I'm depending on. So the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So Paul is not saying, Keyshawn, for you to put your trust in me. He's saying, I need you to follow me as I follow Christ. Uh, what is that really saying? That's really saying, go on and follow me. That's really saying, even though Keyshawn is following me, in order for him to know if I'm following Christ, Keyshawn Keyshawn cannot just see me, God help me, but Keyshawn also needs to have a visual as to where Jesus is. Uh, so he's following me as I follow Christ. And so Keyshawn is saying, I'm with you uh, as long as I see Jesus, God help me. I'll follow you as long as I see Jesus. Uh, but if he follows me as I follow Christ uh, and he always sees where Christ is, uh, if I ever start to veer off off the track uh, oh God uh, Keyshawn ain't gonna follow me because Keyshawn knows where Jesus is uh, and Keyshawn is saying I'm going where G Pastor Jake can go over there if he want to uh, but I got my eyes on Jesus uh, somebody put in the comments and say get your eyes on Jesus uh, come on church uh, get your eyes off the pastor uh, get your eyes off the first lady uh, get your eyes off of who left the church 
who join the church. Uh, get your eyes off the bishop. Uh, uh, get your eyes off your companion and put your eyes on Jesus. Uh, uh, as long as they're following Christ, uh, I can follow them. But if they ever get off track, uh, uh, I'm not going to follow you. Uh, I'm not going to be that type of person that says, uh, well, I'm just going to go wherever the pastor go. Uh, uh, I don't see Jesus over there, so I don't care who it. Y'all don't want to, y'all don't like this type of preaching. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, I see y'all putting it in there. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, I want us to understand that there is a manifestation of God's power. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the power of God. Understand, uh, put that real quick before I move forward. Uh, everybody put in the comments and put manifest. Yeah, yeah, manifest. Because I believe in this year of expansion, uh, there will be a manifestation of the power of God's Holy Spirit. The manifestation of God's power. It will happen for them who have faith in God. Y'all missed it. It sounded simple, but it's deep. I said, if we're going to see a manifestation and if there's going to be an expansion in our lives, then God is saying it's only going to happen for those individuals who have put their faith in him, not your pastor, in him, not your organization, in him, not your auxiliary, uh, not your jurisdiction. He says, if you want to see a manifestation of my power, I need you to put your faith back in the Lord, your God. Uh, somebody help me preach and teach. Uh, put it in the comments or tell your neighbor if you're in the sanctuary and say, I'm going to trust God. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to trust God. Uh, I respect all of the other entities, but I'm going to trust God. Uh, I expect some of the traditions that I grew up in, uh, but I need to keep my eyes on Jesus, and I'm going to trust God so that I experience the manifestation because my faith is in him. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, God is saying that is it possible uh, that maybe the lack of manifestation, uh, maybe the lack of a greater glory, uh, maybe the lack of a move of God uh, that some of us have been experiencing in our churches, uh, is it possible uh, that it is due to, hear me, uh, the elevation of other areas that are insignificant, God help me, as it relates to God's kingdom purpose in the earth realm. I just said a mouthful right there. Uh, maybe the reason we are not experiencing the move of God like we would like to. Maybe we are not seeing uh, the dead raised uh, and the sick healed like we want to uh, because uh, we have had an elevation in other things in church, uh, in quotes, uh, uh, that are not significant to the kingdom in the earth realm uh, for the purpose of God's glory to be manifested in our lives. Can I get a witness. God help me in here. Uh, maybe we have a lack of manifestation uh, because we have elevated positions uh, in the church. God help me. Uh, I mean people who were brown nose for positions. Uh, I mean people, uh, God, who will put a scandal and a rumor out on somebody uh, who is in competition for the same position that you would like. Uh, maybe there's a lack of manifestation uh, in the kingdom Kingdom because we have elevated positions in the church uh, rather than the power of God in the earth realm. Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, we have a lack of manifestation uh, in the church, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because we have elevated, God help me, preferred seating uh, over the power of God. Uh, you can't sit there. Why? Uh, because that's a mother light bulb seat. Uh huh. Uh, Mother Lightbulb been here for 52 years. Uh, uh, don't nobody sit in Mother Lightbulb. See, you can't RSVP. Uh, uh, that seat is for the dignitaries. Uh, uh, maybe we don't have the manifestation of the Holy Spirit as we would like it uh, uh, because we have elevated preferred seating uh, for individuals. God help me, uh, who bleed 
eat like me? God help me. Uh, who sleep like me? And if they don't take a shower, we'll stink if I don't take one too. Uh, we've elevated that in the church more than the power of God. Maybe, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, they're not going to like me on this one, Travis. Maybe we don't have the manifestation of a move of God as we would like in the church because we have elevated uh, the use of your pocketbook and your purse over the power of God. Uh, I'm going to get in trouble, but it's all right. I got the mic. <laughs> Help me to understand, church. How is it that we spend one hour and 12 minutes taking up an offering? How is it that we got all of these lines uh, during the service? How is it we take so much time, God help me, uh, trying to get your money during the service? Uh, but when it comes to the altar call, uh, we say, you better get on down here. We only got 60 seconds. Uh, uh, you better hurry up. You know by now if you want to be saved. Uh, why have we elevated uh, offerings uh, in the church more than we have the power, God help me, uh, uh, of God who wants to change somebody's life, uh, who wants to be saved. Can I get a witness? Uh, I want y'all to help me in Facebook world, on YouTube, uh, and those in the sanctuary. Uh, whenever I say, can I get a witness? Uh, I want y'all to yell back at me and say, yes, you can. Uh, uh, come on, let's practice it right quick. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, uh, did y'all hear them? Uh, I hear y'all in the spirit too. Uh, uh, we have elevated things uh, in the church realm that are insignificant in God's kingdom. Uh, and we wonder why we don't have the manifestation of a move of God uh, as it were in the book of Acts. Uh, look at somebody and say, I need a move of God. Come on, y'all. I need a move. I need a move of God. I need a move of God. I don't need chill bumps. Come on here. I need a move of God. I don't need an emotional high. I need a move of God. I don't just need a praise break. I like praise breaks. But after I get through shouting and I got to go back home and deal with the hell of my household, I need a move of God. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, I need a move. I need a move. Come on, y'all. I feel like preaching a little bit. Look at what the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, around verse number 8. The Bible says, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if we receive power, it is because there was something we were lacking in our lives. In other words, God says, I'm not going to give you anything that you already have. So if I'm telling you to receive him, if I'm telling you to receive the power, it is because you do not attain him. You want to receive the power. Anybody mind lifting your hands in the sanctuary or with your emojis and say, Lord, I receive your power. I receive your spirit. Anything that's lacking, you have given me the power to have it now. He says you're going to receive power. That word power in Greek, it is the word dunamis. It means ability. Y'all ain't ready. He said you shall receive the ability. I'm getting ready to give you power. I'm getting ready to give you ability. What do you need ability for? To perform God's expression through you in the earth realm. I'm about to bust y'all bubble. But if all you use the Holy Ghost for is to speak in tongues, you are doing him a disservice. He said, you shall, you shall receive power. 
He said, you're going to receive ability uh, when my spirit comes upon you. He says, I'm getting ready to give you the ability for me to express myself through you in the earth realm. Y'all still ain't got it. You wait for God to do it. And God said, I'm going to do it through you because I gave you my power. I gave you my ability. I gave you my dunamis. Shake somebody's hand. Emoji shake their hand. And put in the comments, I got the power to do it. If I had just a little bit more push, I'd go in and finish this thing. I said, tell somebody, I got the power to do it. You see, whenever, ladies and gentlemen, whenever we don't walk in power, whenever you and I refuse to walk in power, we then withhold God's expression in us. Did you hear what I said? I said, when you and I don't walk in the ability that God has given us through the Holy Spirit, we withhold God's expression from operating through us. And when we withhold his expression, we put limitations upon ourselves. Y'all ain't ready to go. And if we limit ourselves, if we are not careful with those same limitations, they will become the norm of God's expression to us. Did y'all get what I said? All I'm trying to tell you is if you and I, oh God, refuse to allow God to be expressed in our lives, we will allow the limitations in our lives to become the norm in our lives. And we become comfortable with what God is not doing when God has given us a power to be able to operate through him in the kingdom. In other words, when we constrain the Holy Ghost, it becomes normal to come in the church sick and leave out the same way that you came in. We put a limitation on him and we've normalized not having a move of God. We've normalized nobody being delivered. We've normalized the sick being with us and the sick still leaving out. It becomes normal for depressed people to come in depressed and leave out the same way because we have constrained the acts of the Holy Spirit. But God told me to tell you, church, before I get out of here right now, he said, God didn't give you power. He didn't give you dunamis for him to be limited in your life. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, take the limits off. Y'all ain't ready. Is there anybody out there that said, take the limits off of me? I've got something that God wants to do through me. Take the limits off. I need a little room, a little room, a little room. I feel the Lord. He's stretching out in me. Who am I talking to? God said, I didn't give you power for you to be limited. He said, but I gave you power for you to go out into a dying world and say, through God, I got the power to change something because I got the Holy Spirit residing in me. The power of the Holy Ghost it gives me the ability to go out and be a witness for the Lord. Can I Get a witness. Yes, you can. That's what the Holy Ghost is asking you today. After you run around the church, after you've cried and slid, after the track goes 
goes off and the organ stops, the Holy Ghost wants to know, can I, can I get a witness? Shake somebody's hand and say, I'm a witness. I got power to make something happen through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm a witness, not because I'm in the choir. I'm a witness, not because I'm a youth president. I'm a witness, not because I'm an usher. But I'm a witness because people will see the change that the Holy Ghost brought to my life. Is there anybody out there that says, oh, Oh, what a change. Put it in the comments. Open your mouth in the sanctuary and holler with me and say, oh, I don't hear nobody. Say, oh, oh, what a change. I'm a witness for the Holy Ghost. Why are you a witness? Because the Holy Ghost, he makes me, not it makes me. He makes me walk different. The Holy Ghost, he makes me talk different. The Holy Ghost, he makes me respond different. When I'm acting up, sit on me, Holy Ghost. When I want to curse them out, be in my mouth, Holy Ghost. When my thoughts get crazy, get in my mind, Holy Ghost. I'm a witness. I got power to change some stuff by the power of the Holy Ghost. God told me to tell you, he's looking for a witness. And the Father seeketh for true worshipers, them that worship in spirit and in truth, them who declare, I'll be a witness for the Holy Ghost. I'll be a witness for the Lord. When they talk about me, I'll still be a witness. When they lie on me, I'll still be a witness. When it don't go my way, still be a witness. Can I get a witness? Yes, you can. I'm a witness because the Holy Ghost, it causes me. I said he causes me. Oh, God help me. He causes me to not look for the sign. Y'all ain't ready. I said the Holy Ghost, he causes me not to look for the sign, but he causes the signs to look for me. If you really want to know who a real witness is, look for what's following them. When you allow a Holy Ghost expression to happen in your life, you don't look for signs. These signs shall follow them. Come on, church. That believe in my name. If you drink something, you won't die. You will tread upon serpents. You will cast out devils. I need somebody to say I'm a witness because the Holy Ghost will express himself not just in church, not just at the convention, not just at the conference, but on the street. God help me. In the shopping center, in the restaurant, the Holy Ghost is asking, is this a place where I can get a witness yes you can use me in the church use me on my child use me in my neighborhood can i get a witness yes you can say it come on
come on. All over the building. All over Facebook. All over YouTube. Open your mouth and say, I'm a witness. Come on, say, I'm a witness. I'm a witness for the Holy Spirit. Not just in church. I'm a witness for him. Wherever I go, you can use me, Father. Wherever I am, you can use me, God. Whoever I'm around, you have given me dunamis. You have given me the ability to change some things. And I will not confine you to a church building. I will not confine you to a location. I will not confine you to one area. I will not confine you to one organization. I will not confine you to one group of people. Use me, Holy Spirit. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. When you're on your job, the Holy Ghost whispers, can I get a witness? Uh, you need to say, yes, you can. Uh, you can't say, well, they know about my history. Uh, I don't know folk like this. Uh, what if they look at me funny? Can I get a witness? Uh, and you shall receive power. He said, I've given you power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he said, I've given you power. What did I give you power for? To be my witnesses now i know i know this is a sermon that we normally preach on pentecost sunday but god is saying i want to witness god help me not just 50 days after easter Woo! i want to witness every month of the year come on church i want to witness every week of the month come on y'all i want to witness every hour of the day i want to witness every second of the hour can i get a witness yes you can you can use me father use me for your glory we're not going to limit you god to just speaking in tongues we're not going to limit you god to just a shout and a dance we are your witnesses for the sake of the kingdom to a dying world who needs to see the manifestation of a risen savior listen you need god in your life i said you need god in your life i said you need god in your life i said you need god in your life i want to pray i want to pray for you and i want you to make a confession of faith I want you to make a confession of faith, too. I want you to make a confession of faith. Now listen, here's what a confession of faith is. It is not simply what you say. It's not simply what comes out of your mouth. A confession of faith is when your heart and your mouth agree with each other. So if you just say it, if you just say it out of your mouth, but you don't believe it in your heart, it's not a confession of faith. Come on, church. It's only a confession of faith when you believe what you're saying. So I don't want you to just say words. I want you to believe it. Father, I ask that you come into my life right now. God, I need you. You're not an option. It's in you that I live, move, and have my being. I'm asking God that you remove anything that's blocking me from having a relationship with you. I recognize, God, that Jesus died for my sin and for the removal and remission of them. And I walk in the who-ness of who you have declared me to be. Help me, God, to have faith in you. For he that cometh to you must believe that you are and that you are rewarded to them that diligently seek you. We diligently seek you now. I said we diligently seek you now. We purposefully seek you now. We decree it to be so in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. 
I said, everybody say in Jesus name. Listen, start your journey with us today. I want you to start your journey. If you made a confession of faith, you believe it in your heart and it came out of your mouth. I want you to make uh, uh, this or uh, start this new journey with us. I want you to walk with us and we'll walk alongside with you. I want you to follow us as we follow Christ. We will baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has so much more for you in store. It is so now. We decree it. I love you with the love of Christ. I'll see you next week. I'll see you tomorrow for our prayer, our prayer line, and on our Bible study. God bless you. Until then, can I get a witness?